So probably one of the most classic uses of the Arrhenius equation is to determine the energy of activation using experimental data. So in this case, what you end up doing is going into a lab, determining K for reaction, and then looking at how K changes as you change the temperature. So typically you do it at room temperature, maybe a warm water bath, and maybe an ice bath. And from those different temperatures and K values, you can make an Arrhenius plot and find the energy of activation for your reaction. So where this all starts with is the actual Arrhenius equation. So remember what we've been using was the integrated form. Here we can take the original basic idea and find the linear form for the Arrhenius equation. So you can see y is going to be natural log of our rate constant k value. Slope is going to be negative our energy of activation divided by the gas log constant r. X is going to be one over temperature, and then uh, B is going to be the natural log of A. And so remember, A was um, a constant. So what we do, like I said, is we run a, a series of reactions where we look at the different K values and at different temperatures, and then we use a plot to find energy of activation. And then sometimes A, A is not quite so important, but we're going to go ahead and look at it anyway. So when you graph the natural log of the k values versus the 1 over t, you can see from this that um, we're going to get a slope of net negative energy of activation divided by r. So this is what your um, graph is going to look like. It should be negative. The slope is going to be negative energy of activation divided by r. And then your y-intercept is going to be the natural log of a. So with this, you got to remember that in this case, the energy of activation, the units are going to be in joules per mole. That's because we're using the gas constant R, where the, the units on energy are R. So here I've just given you uh, some basic numbers so you can do the plot, make sure you're doing it correctly. In the actual experiment, we do this here where I, where I work, is you do uh, three different temperatures. So you do a reaction at three different temperatures, so ice water, room temperature, say boiling water, and then you get a corresponding K. And then remember that this K value should go up. Uh, the Arrhenius equation says as the temperature of the reaction goes up, the K value should actually go up. And with this, um, remember your temperatures are going to be in degree C, and we want to put them in a form that is going to be ready to plot. So the first thing you're going to do is convert it to Kelvin, and then you take 1 over that value. And then these are the values that you're going to end up plotting. So same thing with your K values. You want to take the natural log of this K value, so you get these. And when you make a plot, it looks kind of like this. So it's going to be, a, um, be negative numbers. There's going to be a negative slope. You go ahead and get the uh, line form of the equation for this graph. You get the slope here is uh, negative 633. Um, I know that negative the slope times r is going to be e sub a. So all I have to do is take my slope, take the negative of that, and multiply it by my constant r. I get 5.26 times 10 to the third joules per mole. So remember that the unit on energy of activation is going to be joules per mole when you get it from the graph. Same thing, I can take the y-intercept for this. Um, in this case, it is um, negative 3.07. That's going to be equal to the natural log of a. So if I solve for a, in this case, it's 4.62 times 10 to the second. And remember that this value a is called the frequency factor. So it's just a constant that has to do with the reaction. We talked about this in collision kinetics. And remember that the units on A are going to be the same as the units on our value K. So in this case, we were looking at a second order reaction, so the units on A are going to be 1 over molar per second. 